Hi, this is Carol Harnett with another One Take Work, Love, Play daily video blog. And I again, again am blogging from the top of Diamond Head Road in, on, on the island of Oahu. At my, I've stopped my run at my favorite surfing and windsurfing beach where I got to play a little bit yesterday. And there's a great break going on today. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, it's actually a, sort of a surf traffic jam going on out there right now. But I'm here writing my column, um, and my column this month happens to be about international health and wellness. And Hawaii, as far as the United States goes, may be the most perfect place to write, this, write about this because this is such a melting pot of cultures. Granted, uh, predominantly Pacific Island and Asian cultures, uh, but as some may know, as well as the Portuguese culture. Um, because the Paniolos came to Hawaii to uh, work the ranches and Pidgin, I was told by Malcolm Leong, a friend here, was really a communication language that was developed between the Paniolos and the Hawaiians as a way to talk to each other uh, because they were coming from different languages. Um, I start my day here after I have my run uh, and or surf or swim um, with a Japanese breakfast because it's uh, Japanese is a uh, prominent culture here, I've been told. I don't have that verified. Uh, and it's such a clean way to start the day, such a different way. But let me tell you what I'm experiencing, so much an easier way to start every day. And I do try to do that wherever I go and if that's available to me. So what have I learned? So I've learned here in Hawaii about the ability to blend cultures. And the fact, uh, interestingly enough, again, that Hawaii, uh, which I've written about a number of times, is the, uh, has the greatest well-being in the United States, is uh, one of the healthiest states, and also has the lowest level of depression. Now, you can argue because it's of the surroundings like this, but I have argued for a while that it's the sense of ohana that they have, or community. So what do you need to know about international health and wellness? The place I always tell people to start is, in addition to the obvious, that you have to have a plan. And I do think if you're a multinational company, very often people forget that they do need a plan, a global plan. One plan will not work. As my friend Clive Pinder, who I met years ago through V-Life says, you know, the rest of the world is not the 51st state. And we, we do have to understand the concept um, that I have learned from others about thinking globally but acting locally, having a global goal, but letting the people who live in the, all the different specific cultures um, handle that in a way that works in their culture. Um, I, I apologize, I'm blanking on Nicole from Towers Watson's last name uh, here, but one of the things she, you know, she pointed out to me is here in the U.S. the whole individual approach can really work. Uh, to some degree from a health coaching perspective, but in the, a lot of the other parts of the world that won't work because an individual approach is just not really done. It's, it's really, family still has a stronger influence in other parts of the world. So one is you have to have a plan. Two is that you have to allow it to execute locally. Uh, three is you have to recognize that you may have to use different approaches in how you do outreaches. Um, four is you have to recognize that, as Peter Mills pointed out to me, who I also met through V-Life and is a physician from the UK who does a lot of work in the US, you know, you may have different problems. Uh, you know, in the UK, you're going to have higher rates of cigarette usage, although they are down greatly as well. And you're going to have a little bit higher rate of alcohol use compared to the US. Uh, as Nicole pointed out in South Africa, you're going to be dealing with the issues of AIDS and HIV, one that we really don't think a lot of about anymore in the U.S. Uh, we feel like we dealt with that at the height of the crisis to some degree, and we are seeing good effect. So um, what's the next challenge around international health and wellness is you don't have good access to health data. It's, it's handled nationally, so it's, we don't have the detailed data that we have here in the U.S., so HRAs may become important for a really different reason. HRAs may become important because you're going to need just a baseline of understanding the different issues and problems that you're dealing with. Something I should backtrack for a minute um, is because it's the place I always ask employers to start with when they're thinking about particularly wellness initiatives is you have to understand the turnover rate in the country that you're in or in the industry that you're in. For example, here in the U.S., if you're in the uh, grocery industry, you're going to have extremely high turnover not the best place to do a pretty involved wellness program because you're not going to have the multiple years of involvement that you're going to need to see an effect. Flu shot programs are a great program to roll out in a high turnover industry because you're going to get immediate results in less than 12 months. You're going to actually see cost savings, not what's called cost effectiveness, which is a post for another day. Um, the same is true in India. They're actually finding very high turnover as the middle class evolves there, devolves here in the U.S., but evolves there. 
people will go from job to job, so you want to be careful. Same in China about how you roll things out. You want to do something that have immediate effect. One of the things that uh, Nicole and Howard Goff has suggested in China that's important is to bring on-site clinics to potentially allow family members to go to those clinics. So there's a lot I can um, tell you. I will try to expand on this a little bit more in writing the column, which I should say at this point, um, I am hired and paid to write for HR executive, and I must uh, acknowledge them as a client because that's an FCC regulation, and this is being posted in the internet world. So big points are, as I close from this beautiful point in Hawaii, uh, where they have embraced international culture within their state, is to have a plan, have a global plan, allow it to evolve locally, allow the approaches to be different, allow sometimes the focuses to be different or the foci to be different. Um, realize that the approach that works in the U.S. on individual coaching may not work in other cultures. Realize too, as Howard Goff, uh, who I also met through V-Life originally, is now at Cigna, has pointed out, is some countries, if you've got expats moving into them, are also requiring healthcare coverage as uh, part of the visa process, not only for the employee themselves, but for their spouse and for up to three children. So just realize uh, that the biggest thing is that you need a plan that can be individualized to the local culture. So this is Carol Harnett with the One Take Work, Love, Play Daily video blog saying that I hope you're experiencing some great work, but you also get to experience some tremendous love and that you don't forget to play. Aloha.